Fit to 
never went to a youth event. Probably more in the 80s. Raise your hand. Keep those hands up, the friend was leading music. <laughs> it's telling, isn't it? Well, you're gonna know this song. And you're gonna have to lead everybody with us. Just like it was the 80s. Trouble come my way sometimes. Trouble come my way sometimes. We'll have to follow close behind. We'll have to follow close behind. Well, sorrow too and knows my name. Sorrow too and knows my name. And in this we are all the same. In this we are all the same. Oh, come away, hey, come away, hey. One day I fly, the next I crawl. One day I fly, the next I crawl. Running free, then prison wall. Running free, then prison wall. Ocean deep, this freedom song. Ocean deep, this freedom song. Calling me to come along. Calling me to come along. Oh, come away, hey, come away. Well, God outside, God within. God outside, God within. Spirit underneath my skin. If I slow down, I can hear. If I slow down, I can hear. That still small voice so loud and clear. 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 That still small voice so loud and clear.
resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last day he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession.
I'm used to people applauding when I stand here. <laughs> Welcome, friends, to the ancestral home of the Cherokee people who knew this as a gathering place. Welcome to this place that many of us know as a thin place. On this day when many of us experience a painful reminder of loss and the continued reminder of the need for healing in our world, we come to celebrate Robert Francis McKendry. He'd be so mad at me right now for saying his full name, <laughs> which is part of my objective today. <laughs> Fran, who embodied the prophet Micah's call to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before God. So friends, through the rhythm of music, the spoken word, and in silence, in the midst of this beautiful creation, we come to celebrate the life and ministry of Fran. And in doing so, we will be a beloved community, a circle of love, a container of transformation, which is all that Fran ever wanted to create. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who is, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding. We remember before you this day, our friend, our brother, our partner, our spouse, our sibling. We thank you for giving him to us, all of us who knew him as family and friends to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless, boundless compassion, console all of us as we mourn. Surround us with your love and fill us with grace confidence so we may continue our course on earth until we are all reunited together. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Voices at Midnight Without a Moon by Jack Gilbert. Our heart wanders lost in the dark woods. Our dream wrestles in the castle of doubt. But there's music in us. Hope is pushed down but the angel flies up again, taking us with her. The summer mornings begin inch by inch while we sleep and walk with us later as long-legged beauty through the dirty streets. It is no surprise that danger and suffering surround us. What astonishes is the singing we know the horses are there in the dark meadow because we can smell them, can hear them breathing. Our spirit persists like a man struggling through the frozen valley who suddenly smells flowers and realizes the snow is melting out of sight on top of the mountain, knows that spring has begun. Twenty third Psalm in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, 
I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. When the weight of this world crashes down on you, God will the sound of you. When the sky turns black and your thoughts turn blue, oh God will the sound to you. stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. 
Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. Or in other words, they didn't have a clue what he meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Robert Francis McKendry, behold your flock. Those of us who could get here, sitting in for those who could not. Hello, Fergal in Ireland. Hello, everyone who can see us, who can't see you. It sounds a little like heaven, doesn't it? It's not like those of us sitting here all know each other. There's no spray on our butts like there is on those Irish sheep. You, Fran, love to watch on the Dingle Peninsula, a burst of red on one rump, short blasts of fluorescent orange and purple on another. But even if there were, today's not about seeing, not this side of the grave. It's all in the ears for us. We're here because we heard your voice and we started following you around. We're here because your voice gave voice to what was in us, saying what we wanted to say, but didn't know how. We're here because your voice was a thin place where the sound of another voice could always be heard wooing us Godward, even when we didn't know who or where that was. You were the word made voice for us, Fran. You were the voice made flesh. We're here because we heard you and we wanted to belong to your song. If you think I'm getting Fran and Jesus mixed up here, we're off to a good start. <laughs> because when Jesus started talking about shepherds and thieves, gatekeepers and doors, no one knew what he was talking about either. Was he saying he was the shepherd or that he was the gatekeeper? Maybe he meant he was the door. They did not understand what he was saying to them, John wrote. The only way Jesus could have confounded them more was maybe by picking up a hand drum or a lap harp and singing what he had to say instead. That would have been just like, you know, conduct unbecoming a savior telling stories when he could have been giving them straight teachings instead, using poetry when prose worked just fine. Why sing what you can say? I'm sure the answer has something to do with your Enneagram or your Myers-Briggs type, but whatever the color on your butt, you know the real thing when you hear it, don't you? You can tell the voice of a thief from the voice of a shepherd, your shepherd, without even looking. You can hear the difference between the sound of a gate opening and one scraping shut, even on a night with no moon. Because if you couldn't, you wouldn't be here. Fran's voice was the hearing test, and you passed. I don't know where you were or what else was going on, but when he called your name, you heard it. You turned around to see whose voice that was, and there was your new shepherd not a replacement for the capital letter one, but an embodiment in your own time and place. Truth teller, divine troubadour, voice in the wilderness, soother of souls. 
As easy as Fran was on the eyes, it wasn't about the visuals with him. It was about the voice. Like so much of what God does with us, it was all in the ears. It still is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Wisdom cries out in the street, in the squares she raises her voice. At the busiest corners she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates she speaks. Just then, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them, and from deep in the cloud, a voice. This is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Let anyone with ears listen. Any questions? I have one, a big one. What was it about Fran's voice that made us turn around? As if a crowd this size could say, it might as well be like asking a flock of sheep what made them turn toward the shepherd, each with their own answer. Maybe it was hearing the shepherd's pet names for them, or maybe it was the way he sang them. If he called them like I call my cats, there was a melody that went with each name. Soot, soot, sooty, fio, fio, fio. That same voice called them all, and that's what made them one. But the voice also knew each by name, and that's what made them like no one else. You could see it when Fran sang to a full room, couldn't you? How the song drew everyone there into community while it struck each heart with its own gong. There's no surer sign than that, that the veil has parted. When the singular and the plural come together like that, the many and the one, as if there were no distinction, as if the one flowed into the other for those brought to life in the same breath by the same love. So there's another thing about Fran's voice, the fullness of the love in it. Even when he was calling out an injustice or pressing a wound still raw, he could sing about the saddest things and leave you reason to hope. He could sing about the happiest things and remind you of their cost. Maybe that's why people sing what they could plainly say. Because a song, it makes you search out the most perfect words, which are sometimes the most difficult ones, finding the rhyme in them finding the rhythm they're all willing to serve, and then stringing them together with music on a single strand that cannot be separated into what's happy and sad, what's hopeful and costly, what's welcome or not. The truth of the song is that all those things go together in a continuous strand, verse by verse, just as they do in life. They all have a place, though there's something about singing them that makes the truth easier to bear, or if not easier, at least more possible. The beauty of the song strengthens the soul to hear the truth in it and maybe even sing along. So dream on, you preachers. Given a choice between a sermon and a song, who wouldn't choose the song? <laughs> in Matthew's Gospel, when Jesus' disciples ask him why he speaks in parables, he quotes a passage from Isaiah. He said, for this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. It's a cryptic answer with some early Christian gatekeeping in it. But it also answers the disciples' questions. Teaching in parables is the best way to find out whose ears still work and whose have calluses on them. Fran's voice, callus remover. Worked with oil, not pumice stone. His song softened the ears of people who'd closed them a long time ago to religious language, who were done with singing praise songs or militant hymns, who twitched when someone invited them to church but who could sit in a field like this or a gym and feel something loosening up inside of them, a tears for a lot of them, 
Joy for those who've forgotten what making a joyful noise sounded like, and love for those who hadn't opened the door to love in a long time. As it turned out, the same oil that worked on ears worked on gate hinges, too. Fran was the kind of shepherd who can keep a gatekeeper up all night long. Open now, please. Yes, all of them. No one sleeps outside tonight. OK, now close it to keep them safe. Wait, wait, open again. There are a couple more out there on the wild side. Now close, please, but stay awake. Night is young. I don't know how he did it, especially since he could do it on a CD or an MP3 file as well as on a stage. But to be there in the room with him and the Awakening Soul Ensemble, it was like being part of some full body alchemy, you know, that turned 12 notes, who knows how many keys, into a callous melting experience of being welcomed back into the human race and divinized, to use a phrase from the Eastern Church, all at the same time. That elfin body of his, that all comers grin, that way he stepped aside so the light could shine on Lindsay or Charles, Isabel, Chris, River instead. Eric, you too. <laughs> I've been talking about his voice, but of course, it was yours too. His, theirs, yours, mine, ours. None of the possessive pronouns work without all the others. Fran was a collaborator to the core who knew that you can make your own harmony by recording your own voice over and over again on the same track all by yourself, but that's not the sweetest kind. The sweetest kind is the kind you make with other people. So by now I hope you've caught my drift, but just in case it's been too drifty, let me say it as plainly as I can. I believe that what made Fran's voice so compelling was the sound of another voice within it. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me and another voice inside that one. This is my child, marked by my love. Listen to him. And another voice inside those voices that you'll have to imagine, because this one's the sound of the holy wind blowing. Whew. Our voices were in there too. Things we didn't know how to say until we heard them sung. The long silences in us that finally found their words, their music. That's why this celebration of Fran's life is not just his, but ours, a celebration of the life among us, in which the past tense weirdly becomes present and resurrection takes place. Fran was and is, the voice was and is. Our voices are in there too. The music in us is very much alive and the singing, it goes on and on. As Fran got sicker and sicker, a central teaching of his life in music got clearer and clearer for me, namely that faith is not a cognitive thing. Faith's a relational thing. It's a lot less about believing in heavenly things than it is about being faithful to things the way they are right now in whatever state you find them, rising up or falling down, just being born or breaking down, taking you deeper into sorrow than you ever wanted to go, or waking you to more beauty than you ever knew was there, going your way or in another direction altogether. Faith is about being true to what is. While you keep your ears tuned for that voice that knows you by name, telling you how you can possibly do that and who will be there with you when you do. Faith isn't about what you know, it's about who you know. It's about the music you make together. The sun has come on you, I am still safe here. So I'm just gonna talk a little while longer. <laughs> I wasn't with Fran for the last months of his life. Very few people were. Our relationship was all in the ear. It was on the phone, on the computer, in the songs that he sent me. When he asked me to record one of John O'Donohue's poems for him so he could listen to it during his first round of chemo, I jumped at the chance. So that became our routine. Fran sent me songs and I sent him poems, the best ones I could find for someone being faithful to his life just the way it was. Though the day I promised him an all Irish set, 
turned out to be a real mistake. God, after reading 1,351 pages of modern Irish poems, I found eight <laughs> to record for Fran, which I sent with my apologies. And he wrote me back. He said, oh, yes, the Irish bring such depth to melancholy. The poem you heard earlier that Brian read so beautifully, Horses at Midnight Without a Moon, wasn't by an Irishman, by a New Yorker, and it wasn't in that batch, but it kept surfacing as I thought about what I wanted to say to you today. It had a voice in it that I recognized, and one I thought Fran might recognize too. Our heart wanders in the lost woods. Ah, true. Our dream wrestles in the castle of doubt. Yes, it does. But, but what? but there's music in us. Oh, thank God there is. But is such an undervalued word, that little three-letter hinge that makes the turn from one truth to another, often quite different from the first, opening the door between them so that both are bathed in new sound and light. I was blind, but now I see. You've heard it said, but I say to you, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But, but, hope is pushed down. But the angel flies up again, taking us with her. The summer mornings begin inch by inch while we sleep and walk with us later as long-legged beauty through the dirty streets. It's no surprise that danger and suffering surround us. What astonishes is the singing. Later, Fran sent me the new mix of his song, Hall Away, with Lindsay in the lead. It begins, there's a hollow place inside us at this table set for one, on the other side of lonely, where the song remains unsung. I've listened to it so many times now, I can hear it any time I want to without pressing any buttons at all so alive in my ears. I'd sing it for you if I could, but I can't. No musical gift here, but the gift of appreciation. I'd read the verses, but listen to me, that would kill the song. Because the words can't be surgically separated from the music. Because the music is their blood supply, along with the human voice that lifts them off the page. Otherwise, the truth in them might be too much to bear that there are times when love goes hungry and faith goes missing, times when justice loses her balance and trust gets all bound up in fear. How do you stay faithful to all of that? What do you do when even faith goes missing? Brand didn't say. He made a song instead with the almost hidden upside down gospel aha inside it. And here it is. Even when the table is set for one and the song remains unsung, someone is singing about that. Someone has made a song about the unsung song, giving voice to what is most deeply in us. And what astonishes us is not the lyrics, the notes, or even the singer all by himself. What astonishes is the singing. It's the voice we recognize and all the harmonies in it, the voices within the voice within the voice. I'm positive Jesus sang, even if the gospel writers forgot to mention it. They were probably intimidated by their tin ears, just like me. But the flock heard his music and the way he called their names. Sut, sut, sutty, Theo, Theo, Theo. Schmeagle, you bad boy, where have you been? There's food and shelter in that voice. There is fresh water. On days when there's none of those, there is companionship. A shepherd who knows who and where we are. It's enough to keep us listening 24 seven, even when he isn't speaking to us, even when we can't understand what he's saying, even when there are no words to the song he's singing at all. That's what marks this flock, those present, those far across the sea, the living, the dead, wherever in the world we've come from, however far we go from here, it's the listening that astonishes, the forever expectant, stubbornly faithful practice 
of listening for the voice within the voice within the voice that leads us wherever to flakes of new hay in safe folds one day, to open seas in small boats another, wherever, because there's music in us. And we believe we know where it's coming from. There's a hollow place inside me At this table set for one On the other side of lonely Where the song remains unsung Tender words that go unspoken Midnight longing for your touch Can there be mending what has broken? How can the silence say so? I invite you to stand now as you're able as we offer our prayers.
Holy One, in that space, friend, filled with such generous love, we pray that we may love others as we have been loved. space, friend, filled with deep listening and deep compassion, we pray that we may be truly present with others. space that Fran filled with passion for justice and inclusion of all, we pray that we may live courageously. that Fran filled with music that transformed our souls. We pray that we may forever sing and dance to the rhythm of your heartbeat. Please be seated. Thank you again for being here this day. Really appreciate it. Barbara, thank you for your wonderful words. Brian, Gracie, thanks for reading so beautifully today. Y'all are coming along. <laughs> thanks, Eric, for making it all really sound good back there. <clears throat> and Amy making it look pretty. Thank you all. It's great to be here and to celebrate this day with you. I want to express gratitude also to the wonderful people of Canuga who have worked so hard to make this happen, been very generous and gracious with that. I invite you to consider giving uh, to a memorial fund that we're setting up for Fran here at Canuga. It's coming up on the screen. Whoosh, just like that. That's why Amy and I work so well together. <laughs> There's another opportunity, which is Sawyerville, which happens in the Diocese of Alabama, a wonderful thing. Fran was deeply committed to Canuga and the work here, and Many folks were transformed uh, through his work and life here, particularly a number of musicians. 
and Sawyerville, where uh, Fran became a kid again in many ways. So I invite you to consideration to give to either one of those. A little bit of a logistics now. There, there is going to be communion here shortly. You're all invited to participate in that. There will be stations around the place. Go to where you feel so called. Uh, in some places in the world, people receive communion in both kinds in COVID times and not. It's your choice. It'll be there. Uh, just to know you're invited to receive and to partake of that. There will be a reception following this up in the uh, main lobby and lodge area up there, uh, fireplace. And uh, thanks to my beloved soul sister's request here, there will be a grilled cheese and tomato soup. <laughs> There's dinner after that, and anyone who's here, if you'd like to come and participate there, so you can, if you can be a part of that, you're invited to do that as well. Uh, later on, 7.30, I think. Um, down in the pavilion, there will be placed, uh, again, the bar will be open, the bonfire will be lit. If you want to come and sing Fran songs, tell Fran stories. If you have a lot of money, I will tell you some good stories. <laughs> if you have endless amounts of money, Marty is somewhere hiding here who played in McKendry Springs. <laughs> and if you buy him multiple drinks, he'll just tell you stories. So, <laughs> no, please join us if you'd like. If you come and be a part of that, we'd love to have everybody a part of that. Thank you this day on behalf of Diana, Diana for all of you and the rest of Fran's family for being here and being a part of this and enjoying in this day. Let us now walk in love as Christ loved us.
Please stand as you're called. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, but especially on occasion like this, that we gather and will do so now singing our most or saying our most sacred hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Father and Light. Heaven and earth is full of <laughs> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O holy God, gather us now as your people. Gather us as you've gathered your people throughout all time. Gather us together as you gathered Jesus with his friends on the night before he died. When he took bread, gave thanks for the bread, blessed the bread, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gather us, O Lord, as you gathered with them after supper, when you took the cup of wine and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which shed for all folks. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now that you'll descend your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and upon us making it holy food for holy people. And now finally gather us in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Quando sono solo sogno all'orizzonte mancan le parole. Sì, lo so che non c'è luce o non ha stanza quando manca il sole. Se non ci sei tu con me, con me. Su. Le finestre, non tra tutti il mio cuore che hai acceso, chiudi dentro me la luce che hai incontrato per strada. Oh, 
Hey! 